Hello and welcome back to another character data file. Today we're going to talk about the most idealized person in the Star Trek history and that's Zephram Cochran. If you think about Zephram Cochran at the first time, he came across as a visionary, as a noble person who really fought for the fact as he wanted to make humanity one step further. He developed the warp drive and he invented the warp drive. Well, Zephram Cochran built up a reputation of being a visionary for the human race. He made contact with the Vulcans as well and he was there when they opened the first Warp 5 uh, facility in Earth. I've heard enough about the great Zephram Cochran. I don't know who writes your history books or where you get your information from, but you people got some pretty funny ideas about me. But the thing is, uh, Zephram Cochran wasn't just this person, he was a totally different person as you got to know him from Star Trek First Contact. He was quite an alcoholic, he was drunk and he was actually horny as hell. I try to keep this PG-13. We got to know him as a drunk person, not someone who actually carries a title as Dr. Cochran. Although, as he said, he never intended to do this because of, you know, he wanted to push forward the humanity. He just wanted to get more money and he wanted to retire on a tropical island with full with naked women. That's Zephram Cochran. That's his vision. He had his assistant called Lily, um, who always referred to him as Z. So technically that was the person, and actually he said it. He said the same thing about himself. He wasn't the person who actually everyone believes he is. They always thought about him as, as a historical and philosophical person, but he never been that person. History made him that person. Obviously after the first contact with the Vulcans, he remained on Earth, and he um, was creating and developing the warp drive until the point when they actually reached the uh, warp 5 uh, facility opening day in Earth and then he left Earth later on and he moved to Alpha Centauri but in the age of 87 he left Alpha Centauri because he was dying and he wanted to die in space instead of dying in a hospital somewhere in Alpha Centauri. His body although never been found in space until 2267 when the crew of the Enterprise, technically Kirk, Bones and Spock and um, Commissioner Hedford, they ended up in this moon. Turned out Zephyr Cochran ended up in that moon, in that planet, as uh, Kirk Bones as Spock. And he lived in this planet as a young man, alone, with the Entity. He cannibalized his ship, he built up his uh, own house, and he actually started to become a farmer, he was growing vegetables. He actually lived in that planet for 150 years, uh, with a really nice symbiosis between himself and this uh, Entity, that he called the Companion. Uh, Zephyr Cochran actually told Captain Kirk don't reveal his secret as he is still alive and he still lives in this planet with the uh, companion and Kirk basically took his promise he never ever told anyone Zephyr Cochran is still alive and he still lives in this planet with the companion. As I said, Zephyr Cochran was really an idealized person as we got to know him from Star Trek First Contact and the original series episode The Metamorphosis he looked quite different than actually everyone knew about him and everyone thought he is the man itself. Um, well, let's say his reputation went beyond the man. So there was the visionary and there was the average man and the two person never really met at one point although it was the same person all the time. At one point Zephyr and Cochran really reminds me to someone um, with a similar background who we always thought he's a visionary and then he turned out he has flaws and he's just really a human being. And that has to be Gene Roddenberry. Um, I know we always think about Gene Roddenberry as a visionary and I do think about him as a visionary. For me Gene Roddenberry will be always the person who fought for his dream, who fought for his vision and who really wanted to deliver his message uh, through Star Trek and he fought for Star Trek and he was constantly going after and after the studios and he wanted to make Star Trek happen and actually it became a worldwide phenomenon that we all love and all like. Although Roddenberry wasn't really the perfect person, he had several affairs when he was working as a police officer in LEPD, plus he had an open relationship with uh, Nichelle Nichols and Major Barrett as well. I was reading an article about Gene Roddenberry on Memory Alpha and it turned out he was actually uh, dating Nichelle Nichols and Major Barrett almost at the same time. And Nichelle Nichols technically uh, broke up his relationship with Roddenberry before the Star Trek show started. It wasn't really good for either of them because they didn't want to get in trouble because the interracial relationship wasn't really allowed back then. But as Gene Roddenberry wasn't really just a visionary, as Zeph from Cochrane wasn't really just a visionary. So it's really we're really talking about two different person in, in each character's case. Both Gene Roddenberry and Zeph from Cochrane is basically a two different person although both of them are the same. So one can say Zephram Cochran basically the projection of what and what sort of person was Gene Roddenberry. 
But summarizing the character, Zeph from Cochrane was really cool. I really loved him as a character in Star Trek First Contact. I think James Cromwell really brought a colorful character in Star Trek First Contact. Not to mention he liked uh, classical music, classical rock music actually, uh, Roy Orbison and Steppenwolf as well. And I think for me he will be the one Zeph from Cochrane, although I really like the other actor as well who played in the Metamorphosis in the original series. And Zeph from Cochrane was the only person in the Star Trek history that actually said Star Trek in the Star Trek history. And you people, you're all astronauts on some kind of Star Trek. So that was my little character here file about Zeph from Cochrane. Please let me know in the comment section below what do you think about the character and please let me know as well if you think um, there's a similarity between Gene Roddenberry and Zeph from Cochrane. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm just um, looking into the subject too deeply and, and I, can, I can be wrong, it's, it's totally fine. As always, don't forget to like and share the video, don't forget to subscribe to receive all the geekiness twice a week. And until next time, Live long and prosper.